with the coronavirus still spreading like crazy in the past week and really within the span of just a few days, all major sports have been canceled or at least suspended for a few weeks. So with the present and future of sports thrown into question, we have no choice but to look to the past in order to survive this hopefully short-term sports apocalypse. Welcome to the Cheap Seats. What we are going through now is unlike anything we've experienced in a very long time, or possibly ever. And in uncertain times like these, it is our natural reaction to look to history to give us some example of what to expect or what to do. A little over a hundred years back to the Spanish influenza. Now to be clear, this video is in no way about comparing the two diseases. I am in no way qualified to do that, and to do so would be irresponsible and completely outside the purpose of this channel. So we're just going to stick to its impact on the sports world. But just to give a little context to the Spanish flu's impact on the world 100 years ago, it infected about 30% of the population and killed an estimated 10 to 20% of the people that it infected. Its impact though on the sports world was limited. Keeping in mind that for most pro athletes, their sport was a part-time job. And for that matter, the NBA wouldn't even be around for another 25 plus years. And on top of that, the NFL, which played its first game in 1920, wouldn't even start until the very tail end of the disease. And while both of these sports were played at a college level at the time, they were much more impacted by World War I, which was just finishing up at the time that the flu was getting going. So any impact that the flu might have had on them was greatly overshadowed by the fallout from the war. And so that leaves, at least for our purposes, just baseball and hockey. And while it is really hard to find numbers for just how many people from these leagues got sick from the disease, we do know that it claimed the lives of five ex-minor leaguers and one ex-pro player from baseball, although none of them were in the league at the time that they got sick. In the end though, the biggest impact that the Spanish flu had on baseball was taking one of its most popular umpires in Silco Laughlin. But despite his death in 1918, it seemed to have almost no impact on the games played. And even if it did have more of an impact, it has been completely overshadowed in history by the shortened season in 1918 due to the war, and the 1919 season ending in the Black Sox scandal in the World Series. So in the end, it would be felt by hockey the most, where it would strike in the 1919 Stanley Cup Finals. Coincidentally, the series would be played in Seattle, the very same place that almost exactly 101 years later, COVID-19 would first outbreak in North America. The best of five series will be played between the Seattle Metropolitans of the PCHA and the Montreal Canadiens of the, at the time, two-year-old NHL. And since both leagues had different rule sets, which will become important later, they agreed to split up which games were played under which rules, going with the PCHA rules in games one, three, and five, and the NHL rules in games two and four. After three games, Seattle had a 2-1 series lead, winning both games under PCHA rules. But when Game 4 ended in a 0-0 tie after 20 minutes of overtime, they agreed that Game 5 would be played under NHL rules as a makeup for Game 4, a game that would also end in overtime in a 4-3 Canadiens victory, which tied the series at two games apiece and forced a series deciding Game 6. Now this is where the difference in the rules becomes important. And while the PCHA had a number of different rules, many of which were actually adopted by the NHL later on, we are only going to focus on one, but if you are interested in the others, I go into those in a little bit more detail in my previous video about the Seattle Metropolitan's 1917 Stanley Cup victory, or there's a great video by the hockey guy that I will also link in the description below. The rule we're going to focus on is that the PCHA allowed forward passing while the NHL at this time did not, the effect of which was that the PCHA game was much faster paced and took a greater toll on the players. And while today's players play 20 to 25 minutes a game, shifting in and out, at this time in the NHL, players rarely left the ice at all during the course of the entire game. And although shifting in the PCHA was much more common, Seattle was down to just one extra player after their star Bernie Morris had, in spite of being Canadian, been arrested in the US and charged to serve two years in Alcatraz for draft dodging. While he would be released prior to the following season though, it did mean that he missed the entirety of the 1919 Stanley Cup series. And as a result, again, Seattle was playing a player down and just as exhausted as the Canadians. So with two of the first three games being played under these rules, 
even though the next two will be played under NHL rules, when they both went to overtime, by the end of Game 5, some players couldn't even move, and a number of them had to be carried off the ice and even home. Enter the Spanish Influenza. Now, it's hard to say for sure whether or not some of these players were playing with the flu, but it seems likely they probably were. And even if they weren't, they were certainly made more vulnerable to it by playing to the point of collapsing from exhaustion. With the deciding Game 6 scheduled to happen just three days after Game 5, a few of the players, including three from the Canadians, were hospitalized with the flu. And as a result, they could no longer put a full team on the ice, and were forced to forfeit. But not wanting to win the cup due to life-threatening illness to opposing players, Seattle's manager and coach Pete Meldoon refused to accept the forfeiture and, as a result, the 1919 Stanley Cup was cancelled. Unfortunately though, even with the cup being cancelled, the worst was yet to come, as four days later, Canadians player Joe Hall would die of pneumonia as a result of the flu. To this day, while this isn't the only year that the Stanley Cup has been cancelled, it is the only one where it was started but not completed, as it is engraved on the cup alongside the names of the two teams. Alright, well, that is all for now. As always, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, there is a button for that down there, and even if you didn't, at least you got a few minutes of social distancing out of it, which these days is always a good thing. Um, if you did really like it, there is also a button for that down there as well, and there's a whole section for commiserating with other sports fans in this void of no sports that we find ourselves in. Um, once again, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.